Welcome. So welcome to Ordinary Zen Sangha. This is our little Zendo, part-time Zendo, when my wife's not using it as her office. I started Ordinary Zen Sangha about uh, three, I think it was three or four years ago. And we don't claim to be affiliated with any group, um, but we are a Zen or Song or center. We do practice in the Zen tradition. And even though we don't claim to belong to any particular group, nonetheless, the Dharma has no bounds, doesn't belong to any group or sect or culture. Dharma is beyond all that, and we're part of the Dharma in a very real way. So that's what we do here. We practice the Dharma. And we do that by getting to know ourselves through our meditation practice and the things that we do here, such as this retreat weekend. Um, we've been in this building a little over a year, and uh, the first time Chungan Sunim was here was actually a year ago, uh, in September. And he uh, helped us inaugurate this center by uh, doing a, a Zendo blessing, and we had a wonderful retreat that weekend. And then he came back uh, in, six months later in March, and we had another wonderful retreat. And so this is his third visit here. Chungan Sunim is, is from Hungary, but he's trained in the Korean Zen tradition. He's a Zen master in the Jungi order, and he, is, um, he trained with his teacher, uh, Sungsan Sunim, for about six years in Korea. So that's just a little bit of background. You can read more about him in the little pamphlets that are available back there and also about his temple in the Pills Mountains outside of Budapest. Uh, it's a beautiful place. I've never been there yet, but it's in the plans. In fact, we may do it as a group uh, next year. So that's kind of something in the air. I think uh, the best way to introduce uh, Chungan Sunim is just to let him come up here and be himself. But before I do that, I want to just mention that the talk tonight is emptiness and abundance. So this may sound paradoxical, you know, like so much of Zen, people interpret it as being confusing. How can something that's empty be abundant? It's a wonderful question. And the thing that we don't realize when we first come to this kind of practice is that emptiness isn't empty. Empty is just empty of those things that are not permanent. So uh, I'm sure Sunim will, will talk about it more. But the abundance part for me, the connection between the two is that in Zen, you know, we talk about our original nature, our Buddha nature. And Buddha nature is clear like space. It's beyond thinking. It's beyond the intellect. It's about beyond our understanding of who we are. It's who we really are. And so this is the discovery or the path that we're on. And it's really no path at all because we're not going anywhere and we haven't lost anything and we're not gaining anything. It just appears as though we are in this world of constantly changing phenomena. So we have all this history and we have all these constructs that we've built of ourselves. And now we come to get to know ourselves and we begin to experience freedom or liberation, if you will, as, as they say in some traditions, or enlightenment, or I like to use the term awaken, to awaken to who we are and what we're doing. So. It's really important in today's time, especially in this crazy world that we live in with all the darkness around us, for us to be able to see through all that to what's real. So, you know, we're committed to that. That's what we do here. We practice to get to know ourselves, be better human beings, live on the planet with a more solid, firm foundation in reality. So with that, I'd like to introduce Chungan Sunim. 